Session 2, Sumerian Civilization, 7,000 to 6,000 years ago, Part 2, The God, Shamash Utu. Prior to the events described in the Biblical Book of Exodus, one language was spoken, and the global deluge had not yet occurred. One religion spanned the entirety of all existing civilizations, from the Vedic Aryans in India, China, and Tibet, to the Sumero-Akkadians in pre-Babylonian Mesopotamia, to the Old Kingdom Hyksos and Ethiopian Egyptians along the African Nile River. The winged disc originally symbolized a concept similar to the modern Holy Trinity. It depicts the divine goddess as the central vesica, womb, Pisces, fish, while the divine messiah is expressed as emanating from within in the form of the twin wings symbolizing the flight of time, or serpents symbolizing time's shifting sands. In this image from modern day Zoroastrianism, the good god called Uhuru Mazda mounts the winged disc called a Faravarhar alike the Vimana of the Veda, to complete the trinity of God, Goddess, and Messiah. This symbol of modern Zoroastrian religion dates back to the earliest written records of history, many millennia before the first writing of the Torah by Moses. The symbol of God inside a winged, flying, disc-shaped craft, his Faravarhar Vimana, dates back to the earliest city-states of Mesopotamia. This relic depicts the same image from the era of the Akkadian Empire some 3,000 years ago, though they called this god not Ahura Mazda then, but Ashur. This symbol appears even earlier in this Chaldean cylinder seal imprint. Here we see the god in his flying vessel floating above a crescent moon symbolizing the spring equinox in the contemporary vocabulary. On the far right stands a man gesturing at the god. To his left stands a shorter man, clad in the garb of a fish. Between these two, directly below the crescent eclipse, stands an arched doorway surrounded by seventeen flames. Behind the myrrh priest is a creature called Tiamat, a snake with wings and legs. Above Tiamat shines a 16-point star, to the right of which appear seven orbs. Here is a similar depiction also from Chaldea prior to the Akkadian occupation. Here again the 17 flames surrounding the arched gate, the fish-clad priest, and the god in his Farvarhar aircraft are all meticulously copied. The Chaldean examples show the fish-clad priest character quite clearly. However, his exact function in their society has since been lost. That he is a human male holding a small sphere and wearing on his own head the face-up, mouth-agape skin of a large fish is quite clear from the depictions. In this carved stone bust of one of these mermen, from the Sumerian collection in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, we see the shape of their crown makes their heads appear elongated, but that their facial features remain distinctly human in all traits. Likewise, we see another example of the elongated skull in this small doll, also from the Uruk period 7,000 years ago. This one-third scale doll possesses a different set of facial traits than those shown in the larger-than-life scale bust. This small doll has large almond-shaped black eyes and a small, narrow-lipped mouth. Obviously, however, both bust and doll depict males since the doll has anatomically accurate male genitalia. In one of the oldest cylinder seal impressions unearthed from the Uruk period, we can see a clear depiction of the same myrrh priest character on the far right, holding a six-rayed orb up in his hand. In the middle we see the Faravarhar Vimana, the winged disc, above a small triangular platform. 
in turn above a large fish or dolphin. On the far left appears the god, dethroned from his sky chariot, manifesting his four-armed form, each arm symbolizing a seasonal element. He holds below a cup and downward pointed sword, and above seven orbs and a crescent. One of the next earliest known cylinder seals impresses this depiction of the god, now seated on a cubic throne, counseling with a second figure who appears to have two faces. Beside this figure stands a staff atop of which are six rays. Following this, we see this post-Akkadian era impression from a cylinder seal labeled with cuneiform writing. Here we see the god, identified by his turban-shaped crown, remains seated on his cubic throne, while before him two men appear, the one closer to the god seemingly dragging the other one by his wrist. Behind and above the two men is a six-rayed orb surrounded by eleven smaller orbs. In this Chaldean version of the motif, we see the god on the far right seated on his cubic throne, holding the symbols of kingship, the loop and the line, in his right hand, behind a brick pillar. Inside the god's partition are three orbs, one with seven rays, one with eight rays, and one a crescent. Outside the god's partition stand three very short people relative in size to the stature of the god. The first appears to be dragging the second by the wrist again, and the third and last in the lower left appears to be a female. Between the partition occluding the god and the three small people looking up at him, we see a symbol of Tiamat as an orb of four rays and four rivers, set atop a platform that dwarfs the people by its size. Here, in an early Akkadian period cylinder seal, we see the god again seated on his cubic throne, with his now familiar beard and twin flowing river symbols signifying autumn equinox around him. His sometimes turban-like crown appears like horns on the same level as the crescent, again a sign of springtime in Sumerian culture. Just below this crescent is a star of eight stellations. Three small fish are jumping upstream along one of the god's river symbols, and three people the same height standing up as the god is sitting down, surrounded the god on both sides. On opposite sides of the god, the two males who wear beards grasp downward pointing spears with hourglass-like shapes atop their upside-down base ends. The two men appear to be holding open the partition between them and the god while the woman on the far left looks in on him. This highly stylized late Akkadian period cylinder seal impression commemorates the coronation of Judea over Lagash and shows the same scene as before wherein the god is seated on the far right on a cubic throne surrounded by autumnal river symbols. The three people are, again, the man holding the other man by the wrist, both followed by the female supplicant, seen here wearing a crescent horn crown. The man dragged by the other man is bald and wears a mild toga, while the man dragging him toward the god is bearded and wears an identical crown to the god. In this depiction, the god is shown passing over from his hands unto the crowned man a small vase containing a plant. Behind the woman's back on the far left creeps Tiamat, the winged, four-legged serpent.